A defining moment. Thousands united to fight apartheid. 30 years later, a time to reflect. We wanted a new constitution. We got it. We wanted a democracy that is, that is participatory. Our people are participating. We wanted to make sure that there are women in critical positions in our institutions. They are there. However, others say the UDF's ideals have yet to be achieved. They say past injustices still prevail. We thought after 1994, for what we fought for, things will be better not for us that fought for it, but for our children. But we are still at the same position as where we're standing. This is not the future that we actually plan that we have today for our children. We all fought for our children back then. As children, as a child back then myself, who fought for the struggle, who came to the belief by my leaders, who gave us this promise that one day it's going to be unity, democracy and freedom. It is for these reasons that others have sought to revive the UDF. As comrades, we stood united, brother to brother, and we believe that we would build a society where there's no violence, where we are brothers, where we are comrades, we are friends. And we are saying that is the society that we are busy building. It is wrong for them to try and ride on the bandwagon of the prestige and the credibility and the tradition of the UDF to do things for ulterior motives. The circumstances for the formation of the UDF in 1983 were peculiar to that period and there is no way in which you can uh, um, create another UDF. Among the UDF's prominent leaders were Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Ellen Pusak, Trevor Manuel and several 1950s activists including Albertina Sisulu, Oscar Mpeta and Helen Joseph. Lumko Chumlongo, SABC News, Cape Town.